Today we're taking a look at SciScope. It is a free oscilloscope or it is the free version. There is a pro version that has a whole bunch of additional bells and whistles. It looks really, really cool. I've got the free one. It's a scope that excels at doing things related to phase alignment because it will sync to the beat really well. So for example, uh, I have here this track. It sounds like this. And we could change what we're looking at here by changing the sync. So we could look at um, 16th notes, for example. See the kick popping in there and then we have bass for a bit. It's kind of zoomed in. I usually like to operate on the beat level. So we could see our kick happen and then the rest happens. You notice it does a few things that a lot of scopes just don't do. And it's pretty nice, for example, the screen after you stop playing keeps the waveform on the screen so you can look at the phase and like zoom in and out and and decide things you could zoom with your mouse wheel in and out there's a line that indicates where you are there are little things and there's even on the side here like a little reading little things done right though that just they just add up so with this you might also be wondering how am i getting two well you can have up to four different layers. So right now, the input to this particular track is the bass. And then there is the kick, which is this one. It's actually two kicks and there's a little bit of comb filtering here. Um, we'll talk about that here in a second. And then the other two have nothing on them. So it just uses the bass again. Because in FL Studio, you go up to this cog, go to processing, and then you pick it. And I chose to bring the kick in to input number two. That's why it's on the layer number one, because they're zero indexed. So it starts zero one, which is layer two to FL Studio. So uh, that that's basically size scope though. There's a couple extra options. They've got some latency options, some options to do with how the line is like actually painted on the screen. And there are different skins. There are some presets here uh, that are pretty cool, but you can also get like crazy and customize it to your liking. You could choose to view it via all the layers by clicking the layer option, or you can view the summed waveform together. You can change the magnification of this layer here. You can also just click drag and it will also change so you can move it around. I'm going to put that back at one. You can clear it. There's a cursor option with this on a little blue cursor, or I guess whatever color you pick will run across the screen showing you precisely where playback is at. I know, it's just riveting. And then one for the values. And what this does when you hover over it, it will tell you more info than you could ever want to know about the particular spot on the wave that you're at. So let's talk about some applications here. So phase alignment is what you're going to be doing principally with this. So I have here these two kicks. And when you play them together, they look like this. And you can see there's some comb filtering going on. Anytime things start out strong and then they, they cancel weirdly and they cancel weirdly here again, and then they get a little bit strong, that's phase cancellation. And you can look at the scope and adjust the kicks until you get something that you quite like. It's pretty common to also do this with the bass and try to make your bass fit really well with your kick. So here I'm gonna adjust the pitch. I'm gonna hold control down and move this and just move it like, I don't know, 24 cents. And if we play this, we can see, wow, that's, that was a pretty quick solution there. Um, it, it changes the nature of this phasing. If I go further, I don't know, let's try 70. You can see the ringing changes. Maybe we want it so that our bass comes in right here. The bass is gonna be rising right here. So this might be something that we want so that the initial hit of the bass hits with this um, with this waveform and having two kicks allows you to sort of pick and choose how exactly you want to do that. You could combine it with an amplitude envelope to get even crazier. So let's say that now we're going to add in this bass sound. Let's go ahead and just make it a sine wave to begin. And so it's just playing kick and then 16th note, 16th note, 16th note of these sine waves. So first order of business, let's go to volume and let's make it, um, you know, pretty short. And we can see that they're already somewhat in phase. Like the most important one 
is pretty much there and they're also pretty in phase right here. So we might be happy with this relationship. It's up to you. There's a bunch of tutorials on what you might consider good or bad, depending on the track you're working on and what your goal is. If you want it to sound like there's just this constant chain of bass that never quite goes away, you might go after this. What we could do though, is alter this relationship by either changing the frequency that we're playing or by doing some sort of a phase shift. And if your wave isn't gonna be moving around a lot, this could be something that's an option. So I might come in here and change the phase shift by clicking here and we get a different look. Right here, you can hear that it, that phase cancellation, that little clicking sound, it's because it's mostly out of phase. If we were to look at the summed value versus when they were more in phase, you can see how much bigger that is. And there's no extra clicking every other single one. If we take a look, it is now in the free database. Originally, it was only on the oscilloscope version. Um, and when you go to the website, in order to get the free version, it's been moved to this free VSTs page. Way back in the day, it was the only version. Now, apparently, there's this pro version that looks really cool. <laughs> uh, and they've really, really built it out. But it's very, very good. And my rating system has somewhat changed since when I first rated it. So it's been upgraded to a four star because it really is uh, quite good. It's extremely popular and it excels at what it does. It sort of carves out a niche for itself among Psytrance producers. Uh, so it's there. It is a Windows only. So just be aware of that. I really quick want to show you too the routing for this thing. So all you have to do to get it in FL Studio to route correctly, to have it on the base, it's loaded up a size scope. I took the kick and routed it in via sidechain. Just select the channel you want and shift click. It'll send it in with zero signal, which is how you do side chaining in FL. And it will show up now under the inputs tab when you right click. So you go to processing and then inputs or connections, and then you'll have your different inputs and you can pick whatever it is. So I wanted to make sure I also really quick show the routing. Let me know what you think of SciScope down below. It's quite popular. Uh, way back in the day when I did my big video on like every oscilloscope I could find at the time, uh, this one got a lot of people who just really liked it. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day.